Hey there, it's Pete with GCI Turf. Hope you're having a great day today and I want to welcome you out here to my home. If you're new to the channel, uh, I like showing folks how to have nice turf. Now, I take it a little bit further and do some other things landscaping wise and then I do some business stuff. I own a lawn care company here in North Carolina and uh, we do athletic field work, maintenance on properties, fertilizer weed control, that kind of thing been doing it for almost 20 years now and I kind of like to take what I know and have learned and turn around and feed it to you here on the YouTube so for those of you that are new watching me for the first time a little history on the yard we've been here about 10 years now and uh, one year into us moving to this home I renovated the grass I uh, started with renovating the landscape. Did all the landscaped areas. There was absolutely nothing here. Uh, when you see the flyovers and you see the cryptomeria and maple bordering the property and you see the big crepe myrtles and the Japanese maples and all these plantings around, none of it was here when we bought the home. The patio and pergola, none of that was here when we bought the home. And for the first year of us living here, I come out here, me and my kids, and we installed all this stuff and planted it and, and got it going. And once all the, the plants were done and the bushes and the trees were done, then I went ahead and renovated the turf. It stayed a full uh, turf like tall fescue yard for several years and then I uh, ended up installing irrigation, uh, underground irrigation. Now, I think it was shortly after that, that's when I introduced some bluegrass to the yard. So for the past few years, it's been a fescue uh, Kentucky bluegrass mix. I'm gonna say somewhere around the 80, 20 mix on that. And I know those of you that watch me often, you're wondering, hey Pete, why'd you put that rye grass in your yard? Well, that particular mix of fescue, uh, bluegrass and rye, that's a very common mix that you buy already mixed up in a bag of grass seed like that. A lot of folks up north use that blend, uh, sort of Midwest type uh, locations use that blend. I don't think it's necessarily an ideal mix for the transition zone, unless you got irrigation, obviously. Uh, take out the rye grass part, because obviously the rye doesn't like the hot summers, uh, not even as much as the bluegrass, but I like a challenge. So I added uh, perennial ryegrass to my fescue bluegrass yard already just to see if I can do it. I don't have another reason other than I just wanted to try it and uh, to be honest with you I don't think I need another reason. So time will tell if the ryegrass portion of that's going to hold out and, and you know we'll just kind of see how it does throughout the summer next year. I'm a striping nut okay I realize a lot of you don't care anything about having stripes in your yard uh, I've said this a million times and I'm gonna say it again I don't care I mean it's your grass you mow it how you want to mow it you make it look the way you want to make it look you know that's one of the awesomeness things about our country is you get to have your own grass and you can grow it however you want to but for me personally I know a whole lot of people that really like some hardcore stripes so what causes the stripe it's not uh, any kind of weird mowing like you mow you know, one line this height of cut and another line this height of cut and uh, you're not, you know, painting the lines with paint different colors. I've heard so many different things of what people think causes the striping, but it's, it's none of those weird things. It's incredibly simple. Number one, you need a decent standard turf to be able to stripe. Number two, you need sunlight. Number three, you need a mower that will actually create a stripe. If you don't have a mower that will create a stripe on its own, Big League Lawns makes a roller that you attach to your mower that will create the stripe. I've had a very long, uh, very strong relationship with those guys. I've still got my coupon code uh, for the roller. They literally make them for almost any lawnmower on the market. Almost any mower you can think of they make a roller for it. I have a coupon code with them so you can save some money. I'll put that in the description below. You can check it out if you want to. 
back to step one, you gotta have a pretty good stand of turf. You know, it's kind of hard to stripe weeds. So once you mow that grass in one direction and you turn around and you mow your next pass coming right up beside the previous pass, what that's gonna do is that's gonna tilt the grass blade one way. And then when you turn around and come beside it, it's gonna tilt it the other way. So you're looking at the grass with the grain and against the grain. And when that big ball of goodness reflects off of that grain of the grass, that's what your eye sees is that reflection. And that's how you get the light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. You don't have to change mowing heights or nothing like that, nothing weird. You just have to mow a straight line and mow down, turn around, come right up beside it, turn around, go down right beside it. It's way, way easier than most people think. But again, you gotta have those few things to make it happen. Nice stand of turf or a decent stand of turf. Everybody's gonna get the sunshine at some point in time. A mower that will create the stripe or some type of a uh, attachment like the big league lawn roller, a mat, something. You gotta have something that will teach or train the turf to lay a certain way. Now, I haven't used my striping roller in a pretty good while since uh, probably end of July during seeding season and once I get the grass seed on the ground and things are beginning to come up I don't use the roller uh, the health of the turf is considerably more important to me than it being striped up fortunately I've got a right walk behind that uh, stripes on its own but the roller actually enhances that and makes the stripes pop even more but even at that I will not use it uh, this mowing that you're seeing me doing this video that is the first time the roller has been on since I overseeded I almost said aerated and seeded I did not aerate this time either again it was just something I wanted to try historically for the past t almost 20 years, I have always broke ground, like plugged or aerobated or done something to disturb the ground, to loosen the ground, and then put the seed down. I just wanted to try it different. So I did zero aeration, put the seed right down on top of the ground. Of course, I used my outlet and, and raked over it and thinned the yard out just a little bit. It's kind of sort of like dethatching but I didn't use any plug or all, and you can see it worked like a champion. So if you want stripes in your grass, it's not that hard to do. Come spring of the year, we're gonna do a ton of striping videos. I've already been conjuring up in my mind some new patterns that I wanna try out, so I'm gonna show you all those. So go and subscribe to the channel uh, so you don't miss any of the videos coming up. So I'm about to get out here and do my round six application and that, that's the fertilization uh, part of uh, after seeding. I'm about 30, 40 days past seeding. I've mowed the yard three or four times since I overseeded and it's time to feed it again. And I like to go out with a good heavy shot of nitrogen. Uh, those of you who like granular, the protein 2005 is a great option. For those of you that like liquid, either the 2600 uh, green County Fertilizer or the 1801 Green County Fertilizer. That's Green Punch and Green Charge. Both of those are excellent options. Typically, I would do the granular, but I think I'm going to switch it up this year and just try something a little different, and I'm going to go with liquid. So uh, I'll be filming that video here pretty soon and show you how I do all that. As always, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch. I'll check you later.